All right. Uh, I'm going to do a video here. Um, I've been needing to do this for a long time, and I've done a couple of videos. Um, I've done this video several times, but uh, I wind up not using it because uh, it comes out wrong. After I watch the video, it, it, it comes out wrong. Uh, it comes out uh, where I really sound like an asshole. Uh, and that's just not... I mean, I am an asshole, but um, I really not. I, I didn't mean to come off like that in the video. So I've done this video multiple times. So I'm going to attempt to try it again. Um, with starting out on the video, uh, I want to reference you to um, a video guy, um, MD Prepper. Um, he has a video comparing um, this gun to um, the Gemini's and uh, I did a video too um, but it's not as good as his so I want to refer you to his video to please watch it's a, a comparison video um, I also would like to um, refer you to um, three eye holsters I will be putting a link up to the website and the Facebook page um, it's the number three i holsters with an s dot com um, you can find it on facebook like i said I'll, I'll post a link up for you guys that way uh, you don't have to search uh, real hard um, he makes high point holsters and actually uh, we're trying to work a deal out with high point the company um, another thing i want to refer you to is i have a uh, a group on facebook it's called high point gunsmiths and if you have real life gunsmithing um, or you're in need of help, um, I do have an elite group of people on that page and uh, I'm trying to get more. I am an expert with the C9s um, as you can go into my channel and, and see my videos uh, and the 380. Um, I have less experience with the 40 and the 45 um, just due to the fact of I've only owned two 40s and one 45, and uh, so I have less experience with those, and I'm, I'm willing to admit that. And I have some people on there. So if you're a guy that has had issues out of those two particular models, and you have figured out some kind of trick uh, besides just polishing the feed ramp and adjusting the feed lips, because that's just okie doke. But if you have actually really, really figured out a trick and kind of have got a patent and fix for it. Please come over to my page and try to help some people out. Um, and I just want to go ahead and pre-thank you for that. If, if you have, you're more than welcome to come. Um, it is not a fan page. Uh, people do post up pictures and stuff like that, but it is not a fan page. It is a help page. And I will explain why it is that. So this video, uh, as you read from the title, is going to be uh, what I don't like about high points. Um, and I am going to get started with my story slash experience with these guns. So I'm going to set the camera down and uh, I got two free hands and um, I can kind of go over why uh, the things I don't like about High Point. Um, and just real quick, it's the company. Uh, not, the, not particularly the gun, it's the fucking company that pisses me off. And I will go over why. So here we go. Let's get started. So to save you, I don't know how long this video is going to wind up being, but to save you time, because I don't edit my videos, I do real life uh, set down videos, no pause, freestyle videos, which I'm pretty sure that's what a lot of guys, why I have the subscribers that I have is because I hold no bars. Um, I hold no punches. I... Uh, my prove it videos where I actually shoot the guns is different than most people's videos where they just show one mag being shot and it don't prove anything but the fact that you're possibly hiding something. Um, I don't do those videos. If I have a jam on the range and I'm running film, you see it. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people like is that I actually show you how to fix it but then I also go above and beyond like a lot of people do and I actually shoot the gun and I show you that it works. So let's get started. Uh, my first C9. Okay. I was 
21, lived in a bad neighborhood. I grew up in Dayton, Ohio, uh, Harrison Township, um, which is what you hear on the news. Um, so I, uh, I turned 21, I wanted to buy a gun, like most of us. Uh, I wasn't the type to get drunk on my 21st birthday. I wanted to buy a firearm. Um, so I did so, and I basically went and I bought uh, a used C9. Um, and, you know, I, never, I didn't have any issues out of that gun. But I also uh, did not fire that gun a lot. Um, through the two or three years that I had that gun, I maybe put 100 rounds through it. And I never loaded my mags up completely full because I was told by uh, somebody that was a little more experienced with guns, an older guy, uh, that I should not never load up my mags full, that it wears the springs down and stuff. So I basically only kept like five or six, something like that in there. Um, and I would, I would bust some off every now and again through it, and I never really had an issue. Um, but like I said, I, I didn't really fire it a lot like I do now. Um... I kept that gun in my nightstand as a, uh, you know, basically self-defense. It, it basically lived there and I forgot about it. Um, I didn't really, it wasn't a big deal. I just threw it in there and kind of forgot about it, uh, sat in there and collected dust until the day that my apartment got broken into, um, along with a bunch of other stuff, my, my high point was something that got stolen. Um, so my second C9. Um, I came around, I don't know, 28, 29, and um, I wanted to get more in the, I always, I always owned a gun, uh, my whole life I've always owned a gun, rather it was a shotgun or something, but I just wasn't in, like, a gun enthusiast person, I owned them, but I just, I didn't really know what the NRA was, blah, 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 uh, I thought it was a clip, not a magazine, you know, so I was, I was new to the, the whole thing, but I, really wanted to get into it. I had another gun. I went to the range. I met some really nice people out there. I realized that the gun community is really awesome, awesome people. And, uh, you know, I wanted to be a part of that. So um, I wanted to get more into shooting guns. So I wanted to get another gun. So I went for what I knew. Plus my money was stretched. Um, uh, I had a lot of financial issues, you know, child support, the whole nine yards. Um, you know, so I went out and I bought a C9, and um, it, it ran okay. Um, I never did anything to it. I didn't uh, adjust the feed lips or anything at first. Um, basically, you know, sprayed some Remy oil in it, I knew, you know, and um, it ran good up until about 400 rounds. And then it was just a fucking wall, just brick wall. Just issues, 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 man. Um, no matter what I ran, I mean, well, I had every ammo under the moon out there trying to find. I was inspecting ammo, measuring it, calipers, trying to figure out what was going on. Um, I jumped on YouTube and I, I couldn't figure out anything. Uh, the, all the guys on YouTube, as you guys know, you've searched it. If you're watching my videos, I'm sure you've searched it. So. Uh, nobody has any real gunsmithing experience. Uh, majority of your high point guys are new guys. They want to act like they know something, but they they, they don't. And um, so I was basically all I ran into was polish the feed ramp and adjust your feed lips. So I actually that was when I bought my first Dremel, and um, I did. I polished the feed ramp up. Um, I adjusted the feed lips uh, out. Uh, so that the which made sense. So I thought, man, these guys, yeah, they know something, um, you know. And I did that. It helped, but it did not fix. A fix to me is zero malfunctions, not just doing better. Uh, if I have one malfunction, it's still not fixed. So um, yeah, it still it still wasn't fixed. So I contacted High Point. They were uh, especially after watching Nothing Fancy's video on it where. Uh, it was his neighbor's gun, and he sent it to High Point, and when he got it back, he said it was like a brand new gun again, and they replaced out uh, the slide lock spring or something like that. So I'm like, okay, that's what I have to do. Uh, I have to get it back to them. I must have got one made on Friday or something. Uh, so I sent it back to him with a pleading note, you know, please, please, please. I This gun, I have to, I'm getting ready. My CCW class is coming up. 
uh, I bought this gun because I'm probably going to carry it. Um, please fix this gun. Please. Uh, and I got it back. And I took it out real quick after I got it. And uh, I fired a magazine through it. Um, and they sent me an extra mag. Uh, I fired a magazine through it. And uh, it worked. So, like, yes. And they, they replaced my slide, polished my feed ramp. Um, I was also having issues where the magazine was just clean falling out of the gun during firing. So that was a lot of the issues I was having. They replaced that out. Um, I got the gun back. Like I said, I fired one mag through it. Uh, it worked. I thought, yes, it's, it's good. It's golden. Um, I My CCW class was like right there around the corner like that week. And I took the class. And we got there and... Um, the instructor already didn't like high points, and I, I, I was, like I said, I was new, so I'm like, why, why don't you like, I was just really confused, like, what's the big deal, um, you know, it's a gun, a gun is a gun is a gun, uh, he, he didn't like, him. so I was getting some, some, uh, bad vibes from him, and then, um, I figured out why, we went to the range, and started shooting, and all was good, the first Mac through it or so. And then it just started freaking acting up, man. And it would like after that, neither either mag that I had, it, it just wasn't feeding um, uh, through the gun, and to the point to where my instructor actually took the gun off the range. Um, said it was unsafe uh, not to be doing, you know, uh, mag chain or uh, malfunction drills and stuff like that. Um, Etc. Etc. The most embarrassing thing I've ever had to deal with in my life, uh, with everybody standing around, my guns jamming. Um, yeah, it was it was absolutely embarrassing. I'm lucky that I had my my uh, my Lama 1911 9mm out there, so I was actually able to finish my class. Uh, so it almost prevented me from from my from my class. So um, after that, I. I tried this, tried that, uh, tried a bunch of okie doke shit that didn't work. I sent it back to High Point so many times that I wound up having four magazines. Still wasn't working. Um, still wasn't fixed. Um, so I got pissed and I was talking to a buddy of mine about it. Uh, he had one. Um, he was telling me he had the same issues out of his. So he actually took it back to the gun store. And this is in Dayton. Uh, I'd already lived here. I went to visit him. And uh, he told me he actually went to the gun store griping about it. They sold him a Pro Mag. The guy behind the counter said, you want to fix these guns, you get a better magazine for it. And he sold him a Pro Mag. It was the uh, the eight round Pro Mag, which is HIP-2. Uh, and he said it fixed it, just like that. Well, he ran into some hard times, and I guess he sold his gun or, or whatever, and, uh, or got, st I can't remember, I think his money got stolen too. But anyway, he still had the, the Pro Mag uh, for it. He just didn't have the gun, so he's like, I'll buy it off of it. So I'm, I'm telling him, like, dude, you don't want to buy this, man. It's unreliable. They tried fixing it. It's just a piece of junk. Um, at that point, I was starting to jump onto the boat anchor side of things, and, uh, so he's like, I'll give you a hundred bucks. I'm like, deal. <laughs> you know, uh, I took the hundred bucks. Uh, we actually went to the range that day. I had a couple things I wanted to shoot, and uh, he took the the C9 that I bought that he bought off me, and his Pro Mag and my four mags that I got, gave him. Um, all my magazines just jam, jam, jam. They would run okay if you only loaded up like half mags, but you load up full eight rounds or God forbid you put plus one in it. It was just jam. Uh, it's throwing his pro mag in there. And the freaking thing ran like like a top, man. Uh, it just ran. So, yeah, I was trying to buy that gun back. Uh, plus, also trying to buy that magazine off of him. Yeah, he wasn't having it. Um, so, I was basically stuck at that point. And uh, under inspection of the, the pro mag, I noticed that the spring was a lot tighter. Uh, loading the magazine up was a little more difficult, whereas the high points are super easy. So I started thinking more into it of, man, it's got to be a spring weight. 
you know, the, the springs and the high points are, are, are weak and the Pro-Max is stronger. So at that point, I wanted to get another one. Um, it was my goal to get another one. Um, in the meantime, I took um, my AGI classes and stuff and started watching videos on like tuning 1911s and we all know that these magazines are basically a small 1911 magazine um, and the spring is actually cut just like a 1911 um, so watching that and then also taking my 1911 magazine apart and looking at the different engineering with the, with the spring um, I started becoming pretty clear what, what was going on with it um, so after that I ended up running into uh, a Model C 9mm at my local pawn shop uh, used and they gave me a good deal I buy a lot of stuff from them so they gave me a really good deal on it and that's when I started my YouTube page um, I basically a combination of uh, figuring out by watching the HEI stuff on top of already knowing what was the difference between the Pro Mag and the, the OEM Mags, I figured it out and I kind of came up with a platinum uh, fix, um, a way of a way about doing it. And that's when I came up with my first uh, video. And it led on from number one and I'm, I think I'm up to number nine now. Uh, uh, anyway, so I made the videos a lot to do with uh, wanting to contact High Point to help them out because I was like, it's clearly an issue. Uh, I didn't think that it was something that we all were hiding. Um, to my surprise, this is a big hush hush in the High Point society uh, that if you have a, a jam or a malfunction, you know, you just shh, you don't fucking tell nobody. I didn't know, you know, so I'm like, I'm contacted High Point was telling them and here's the thing that that baffles me is high point acknowledges that they have an issue with the magazines so for like people that say well I, I never had an issue out of it well how is it that you've never had an issue when high point clearly acknowledges that they have an issue with it so yeah um so i contacted them uh, at first it was going good uh you know i sent them my links i was getting good feedback from them um actually uh, the Facebook guy was actually wanting to uh, me to do warranty work for them uh, since I am an FFL I have an FFL at the shop uh, to actually save them you know like basically do all the malfunctions and they do all the, the breaking stuff um, so it was going good well eventually what pissed me off was I got this response from uh, one of the techs at, at High Point, and then also the guy that runs the page. Uh, basically, they would say, uh, yeah, they know it's an issue. We know the mags are sketchy. Um, but then they would go into how much guns they're selling and the fact of every gun they have on the, uh, the plant floor is already sold. Um, so in a roundabout way, uh, under, you know, beating around the bush, basically, um, that kind of tells me that, yeah, they know it's an issue, but who cares, right? We're selling guns. Um, and then also the guy really pissed me off when uh, the Facebook guy said, uh, uh, we, we know it's an issue, but we can't stop production to fix it. What? People were fucking get, could get killed with a jamming, mal with a malfunction during the wrong time. Uh, that pissed me off. So... Um, I deleted my videos and that's why my videos that I have a lot of them were over a year old but that's why they all say like three months um, is because I, I got pissed and I deleted them um, after I deleted them I, I was done I, I just you know I thought fuck it how can I stand behind a company dude that you know I'm promoting them you know, I'm making videos, basically advertising people to buy these guns and the company, and they don't care, you know. And um, so at that point, uh, I was done, and uh, I was getting tons of emails, uh, guys wanting me, you know. It was always the same story. It was, hey, I subscribed. At that point, I'd already built up like 200, 100 or some subscribers. Uh, so by that point, I was having people contact me saying, hey, I... Uh, 
I gotta know somebody, or rather it was a boss, a brother-in-law, something, blah, 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 uh, that has a high point, and I was trying to find your video, and I can't find it nowhere. He really needs that help. And I just, I was just ignoring it. I just, nah, nah I'm done. Um, till one day, I, um, um, oh, well, skipping. So I deleted my videos because I was mad at High Point. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I had went somewhere else to help them, uh, which was Promac. Uh, and if you go on my page, you'll see the videos that I made for Promac, the company. And um, they sent me a magazine, uh, basically tried out, and it actually worked great. But I ended up modifying uh, a new base plate uh, to better help the lock up. And um, as of right now, if you go onto their, their Promax page, it's going to say uh, discontinued item. Well, that's thanks to me. Um, the R&D department is uh, working on a, a Promax uh, to basically um, go after High Point. Um, and a uh, Promag is not going to avoid a warranty on a high point. A high point is a no questions asked warranty. There's no way, like I, I've discussed this, there's no way that a technician is going to be able to tell that you ran a Promag in the gun. Okay. Uh, I've heard people argue with me about, well, they say Promag's the plastic follower damages the slide. So since when did plastic become harder than steel? I, I don't, I don't understand that. Part. Um, basically they do that because High Point wants all your, your mag money. So, um, in the meantime, I would uh, checked out, um, YouTube. I'd always go on YouTube and I'd still look. And a lot of times it was for my own entertainment, watching some of these videos. And, uh, I ran across a video by a gentleman that calls this page, Jay Miller Speaks Out. Uh, and he had a video that, uh, said, um, having feeding issues out of my high point c9 so i watched the video and i just you know wanted to see you know um and he was actually being honest about it saying you know i have nothing to hide uh went into the video about three quarters of the video in towards the end of the video he uh mentions that he had seen a video of a guy that takes the magazines and he bends the springs up to add more tension and also keep the magazines from from tilt the, the the rounds from Tilton in the magazine and he's like but I can't find that video anymore so I'm like huh I wonder if he's talking about me so I contacted him in the contacts and uh, got chatting back and forth with him and he basically inspired me to upload my videos again saying that he gets tons of requests uh, people having issues and stuff and that he Basically, it's like, dude, you have to upload them videos again. You have to help the people out. So, uh, I ended up uploading them. And uh, and then he made a follow-up video uh, about me saying that the videos are now uploaded again. The fix works. Uh, check out. And he calls me Jay Dalton. It's Dalton. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, he, he, he makes a video about that. And uh, he actually sends me a lot of people or to my to my channel so as you can as you can tell through my uh, my little story uh, of the high points why I, I I love the gun because it was one of my first guns and I still own it and um, you know I have like a kind of a love-hate thing going with it and it's not the gun I got the gun to where it works you know so it's so it's not the gun itself but it's just the fact of the matter that the company they, they won't fix it. They need, they need to push a recall. And they need to have everybody send their... They need, they need to come up with a new design on their, on their magazines. Or have somebody else make their mags for them. A lot of companies do it. Um, you know, a lot of companies go to MagGuard. MagGuard makes super high quality magazines. You know if you get a MagGuard, you got a really excellent magazine. Um, and hell, for that fact of the matter, like, what's the, the sad part about, like, the Pro Mag is, like, I've gotten Pro Mags for a lot of other guns, and they don't meet the criteria of a, a quality standard or, a, you know, a, an OEM mag. But the sad part of it is, is they're a better quality magazine than, than what the high point OEM mags are. So that's a shame. 
um, that high point can't even make magazines that's of a higher standard and quality than ProMag. And ProMag is, I hate to say it, because I've had good luck out of ProMag and I've tried helping them out and they are, you know, they are working on their product. But ProMag is bottom of the barrel. Um, you know, and, and here, so what's that, where's that put this? You know, um, so <clears throat> my major my major thing is with the the, the company they need, they need to push a recall and they need to, they need to get the ship fixed um, yeah they need to do something the magazines the spring the, the springs in them is, is the major issue um, and a real quick fix if you guys don't want to piss around with with fixing this um, you can either put a 10 round 9 millimeter 10 round magazine spring in this. Um, and then I've also heard with the 40 and 45, don't quote me on this, but you can use uh, uh, 1911 mags like by Wilson Combat or um, something of that standard. Go to Wolf Springs. Um, I do know, um, if you go to my videos, you'll see I have an Astra A70. Um, the, the magazine spring fits in here, and it works. So there's, there's ways to fix it, but you can also fix it for free by doing, if you watch my number 8 video. Um, so here is another uh, story on why what really really irks me is because um, like I went over in my video where I compare my JA9 uh, to the high points and basically this beats the high point in every category that I can possibly come up with or scenario besides CCW and mainly because this has an alloy frame. Uh, it's actually, I thought it was thicker, but actually the, the grip thickness is not much thicker, but there's a lot of weight right here in the grip. And if I had to carry one of these guns, it would probably, it'd be a toss-up. Because the high point would be easier to carry, but yet this is more reliable. Um, so, it's kind of a toss-up, but majority of your folks are going to go for the C9. So that, that really makes me mad, because like, I had recently went to a place... Um, that I seen a security guard and she was carrying you know I'm a gun guy so I always look uh, she had a, a, a high point C9 and uh, at first my first impressions was that's cool you know what I mean because I'm still a high point f fan to a point you know so I'm like oh, that's pretty cool uh, but then after I got thinking more about it it really started pissing me off um, mainly due to the fact of, by looking at this girl, she was really, like, as far as, like, guns go, she was probably really wet behind the ears. Uh, she probably don't know how to do a malfunction drill, she, you know. Uh, she's not ready for a gunfight. Um, or a gun to start giving her issues. And what really pissed me off was I started just, like, thinking, what could the possible story be behind her getting that gun? And what I've come up with in this might might not be true but what i come up with in my head is that i try to play out the picture and i picture this i fit i picture she probably had just some okie doke job whatever and, and applied for the security job which is probably an upgrade and um it was probably one of the things where you know maybe six months to a year went by you know how it goes and then all of a sudden out of nowhere you get a phone call stating hey the position is now available are you still interested Etc. Etc. She took the job. Um, she probably used her last job's last paycheck and had to go Johnny on the spot and go get a gun. Uh, she probably didn't make that much, you know, uh, whatever the case may be, um, because most security guards slash law enforcement use clocks or MMPs or SIG or something of a higher quality. Um, just because I know personally that when I took um, uh, the police uh, police department, I signed up for them. And when I took my first class through them, um, basically they told me that as long as it's a Glock, Smith & Wesson, or a SIG, you don't have to qualify it. Uh, any other name brand guns, you have to qualify it with like a thousand rounds um, with no malfunctions. Um, so, you know, I seen her with that high point and I thought, she probably ran out Johnny on the spot. Uh, had to get whatever gun it was that she could get, which was this. She maybe shot 
50 rounds through it. Probably never cleaned it because they're so damn difficult to take apart uh, to clean. Because you probably never cleaned it, so the gun's probably sat there with it. a year and a half worth of dried up dirt in there. Uh, she probably don't even have one in the chamber because most high point owners don't because they're new. Um, so there's probably not even one in the chamber. Racking these guns is really extremely difficult. If you don't rack them hard, uh, you can jam up just trying to uh, make your gun ready. And then I started, I started thinking more of what, how High Point's attitude was towards me about can't stop production line to fix this and every gun's already sold and all this. And it really just pissed me off because that could cost that poor girl her life. Somebody was coming to that place, pissed off, shooting. Hell, even if they had a Keltec or a fucking Taurus. Better than, than probably what she's fucking sitting there with. So any gun, that, basically any gun. Because uh, high points or like the bottom. Uh, any gun that's a little bit better than the high point, she's going to lose in that gunfight. And it could cost her her life. And now I'm sitting there thinking this girl's picturing in my head that this girl's dead and starting to think back on what high point said and then also it pisses me off when I when I think back to my first high point where I was a dumb kid and basically shot it a couple times and loaded it up in my nightstand just like basically like that security guard probably did shot it a couple times and started holstering it uh, it could cost me it could have cost me and it could have cost her or her life along with hundreds of thousands of fucking people out there um yeah it really really upset me uh, i just wish they would really do something um i've tried to ruffle as many feathers as i can on this um but a lot of the high point guys are such diehard fans like i said it's like a big secret society uh to the fact of you don't admit that you've had a jam out of your high point you don't it's forbidden they will forsake you you know what i mean like uh, they will hush you out of the community. Um, and I've experienced that through multiple High Point fan pages where I went on trying to help people. And people were going, whoa, so what you're saying, High Points are junk? And I'm going, no, I don't say they're junk, but they're not the best gun in the world. They're not even the best gun for the money. <laughs> um, you know, they do, there's clearly an issue. I know you guys just had malfunctions out of them. Oh, no, mm-mm. Band, delete, block. They just get me right on out of there real quick. So, um, yeah, that's it, man. But, you know, for, for the most part, like I said, I've got this gun reliable. I like this gun. I still own it. Um, you know, that tells you something. Um, I try to, the reason, only reason why I'm still doing high point stuff is to help you guys out. Um, my subscribers and my loyal followers that I have. And also my, my new subscribers and my new followers that I don't have yet. Um, because I'm a, I consider myself a helpful person. And if you have this gun, I want to help you uh, get it reliable. But a lot of it is getting the guys to first admit that they have an issue. It's like an alcoholic. Um, and then once you've admitted it and you're okay with, yes, I have had a malfunction. Can you please help me? And then after that, everything's good. Um, but it's just getting it's getting past that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you uh, another little upgrade that I've done to, to my to my high point. Um, everybody knows this is my high point. Um, got the talon grips on it to enhance the grip. I also put the JCP mag button, flat mag button on it um, for when I am carrying this gun or doing uh, uh, some training with it uh, that I don't accidentally inadvertently hit that button. Um, also, if you can see, uh, this is the JCP-40 trigger in there. Um, I put that in there because it has a fatter palm swell, so there's more, um, you get more finger onto the actual trigger, um, and it don't hurt your, your finger as bad as the OEM one that's in, that comes in this. Um, I have also, um, painted my sights white, uh, got those out of there, the, the, the orange or red, whatever, and the yellow. Uh, to me, it just kind of seemed generic. Um, it just kind of felt like a toy gun uh, looking at it. Um, and then also, uh, I want to show you the holsters. 
Uh, these are through 3i. This is his um, range and carry. Uh, mainly it started out as a range holster, but a lot of people were carrying them with it. Uh, he puts nice uh, small um, belt loops on it to hold it closer. Also, if you can tell, um, he also curves the holster to uh, get closer to your body. Um, another thing that I like, which um, I've worked with him on improving the holsters, is if you look, he cover, he's now covering the mag button, and he's also covering the safety completely. So as you're carrying this gun, there's no way that you're going to push that mag button or inadvertently take your gun off safe. Um, and he's been doing this. It's, it's called a sweat shield, but he basically just took it up a little higher for this gun to cover that. Um, and here is what he calls a quick clip. And this is actually my favorite holster. Um, this one costs a little bit more, and I'm always budget-minded. Um, I do like this one, but I do like what I like about this one is uh, the convenience factor for me. Um, a lot of times it's uh, last minute notice on going to the store, grocery store, or something like that, and I like to be able to just quickly holster, go, come back, and when, I, when I'm done, I want to take my gun off, and it's really simple. Um, and that's why it's called Quick Clip. Um, but he did the same thing. Oops. He did the same thing on this one. Uh, he's integrating the safety on this. And this is, uh, if you look at my CCW video, this is the, the holster that I'm running in that. Uh, I am going to be doing some more videos, um, especially now that I got my mag pouch. And uh, I kind of came up with this idea. Because um, a lot of times on the, the mag pouches, he puts two small belt loops while I wanted a quick clip. And I wanted it on my left hand side. Uh, inside the waistband since these magazines are so thin um, but one of the cool things about it was um, I also wanted to be able if I wanted to put it outside I still want my magazine in the gun with my bullets backwards so what he did was um, as you look on this side uh, there's this basically spreads out so as it's in here like he molded it he's using the mag uh, catch button to add tension this way, uh, plus your belt is going to be squeezing it, so you're going to be adding more tension. Sorry. Um, also, on top of if you turn it the other way, uh, it's going to spread and add tension. So um, that's it. I'm going to wrap this up. Um, please don't take it as if I'm like I hate high points because I I don't I don't hate high points, man. Um, I just really dislike the company and their attitude. So, um, please uh, join me on Facebook. Please uh, check out the 3i holsters. I'm going to send you a link to. Uh, check out MD Preppers videos if you already haven't. And uh, if you haven't already checked out my videos and this is the first video you've ever seen of mine, go into my channel and check out the rest of my videos. Definitely hit the thumbs up because um, you, what you're doing is you're helping to promote my videos to the top of the search list uh, for people that actually needs help. So, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and uh, definitely hit the thumbs up.